So good day to everyone. Uh, today we discuss um, a very important concept in linear algebra and matrix analysis. And the concept is called uh, a matrix in row echelon form or REF uh, for short. Okay, to start off the uh, discussion, uh, let's first define what a matrix in row echelon form is supposed to be. So as indicated here um, in the first paragraph, a matrix is said to be in row echelon form if the next row has its first non-zero element, uh, which is to the right of the non-zero element of the row above it. Okay, so when we say the next row, it has to be uh, the next row to the bottom um, of the previous uh, row. So um, to see this in action, um, suppose we have the matrix A given here with uh, the first row uh, having elements 2, 3, 0, 4, uh, second row negative 3, 1, 5, 2, and third row 4, 3, 1, 1. So if you will notice, um, the for the first row, the first non-zero element is 2. And so what we want to do is, uh, if we focus on the second row, we want the spot for negative 3 to have a zero term. So the first non-zero term in the second row must be in the spot where the 1 is located. OK? And so to be able to turn the minus 3, which is the first non-zero element of the second row, into a 0, what we want to do is to uh, make use of what we call row operations so that the 3, the minus 3 rather, will be replaced by a 0. And so uh, what I want to do first is I want to denote the first row by R1 then the second row by R2, and then the third row by R3. And it seems that I can turn the minus 3 into a 0 by multiplying row 1 or R1 by a certain constant or a certain number. Okay, So what I will do is I will multiply um, row 1 or R1 by 3 over 2. And then after that, I will add it to row two. Okay. Now, um, first, let us focus on the three halves times R1. If I multiply the first row by three halves, so the first row is two, three, zero, four. What will happen is if I do a term by term multiplication, then the resulting row will be equal to three. 9 over 2, 0, and 6. OK? And so this uh, actually justifies the fact that we multiplied row 1 by 3 over 2 because the leading term now for this row is equal to 3. So that if I add it to the second row, so take note, I'm adding two or the second row so minus three uh, one five two okay and so i'm adding term by term and automatically the three and minus three will cancel out nine over two plus one will give us eleven over two zero plus five gives us five and six plus two gives us eight so what will happen now is uh, the matrix a which has uh, elements in the first row being 2, 3, 0, 4, will have a second row, which will be replaced by this new row. So this becomes 0, uh, 11 over 2, 5, and 8. So again, let me reiterate that that is a 0. So um, if you will look now uh, at the second row, uh, you will notice that the first non-zero element of the second row, which in this case is 11 over 2, is towards the right of the first non-zero element of the row above it, which is 2. 
So at least as far as um, the second row is concerned, we have already satisfied the definition of row echelon form, at least for the second row. So we're going to do the same thing for the third row. OK, um, but first, what we have to do is to be able to turn this four here to a zero. OK, so what I will do then is I will have to, again, multiply the first row by some constant such that if I added it to the third row, the spot where four is located will become a zero. OK, so it will be replaced by a zero. So to do that, what I can do is I can multiply row one by minus two. Now, why minus two will become clear after I have done the operations. So the next row operation will be multiplying the first row by minus two and then adding it to the third row. So if I multiply uh, the first row by minus two, it will turn into a row which is equal to minus 4, minus 6, 0, and minus 8. And then I will have to add that to the last row with elements 4, 3, 1, 1. Automatically, the minus 4 and 4 gives us a 0. Minus 6 plus 3 gives us a minus 3. 0 plus 1 gives us a 1. And minus 8 plus 1 gives us a minus 7. So now this element here is equal to zero. And what we have done is we have already cleared the column containing two, which is this element, um, all equal to zero. So I will replace the third row by this new row and write it as follows. So zero minus 3, 1, and minus 7. All right. So again, I will reiterate the fact that um, at least with reference to the, uh, the first row, OK, the first non-zero element in the third row, which is minus 3, is towards the right of the element 2 here. OK, and so what we have to do now is to make sure that the spot where minus 3 is located be replaced by a 0. OK, and we can do that by now focusing on R2. OK, so what will happen now is I will denote this. So let me change the ink. So. I will make this my R2 prime and this as my R3 prime, OK? So I have to use primes because these rows are different from the original rows that we have, OK? So our task now is to make sure that the minus 3 here will be um, replaced by a 0. And so after doing that, the first non-zero row will actually be pushed to the right of this non-zero element, which is 11 over 2. So to be able to do that, what I have to do is I have to multiply uh, row R2 prime by some number such that if I added it to R3 prime, this spot here for minus 3 will be replaced by a 0. So I can do that by multiplying uh, R2 prime by 6 over 11. So 6 over 11 times R2 prime plus R3 prime will hopefully give us the desired result. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm multiplying by 6 over 11 will be clear when I carry out the uh, operation itself. So I want to multiply R2 prime by 6 over 11. So 6 over 11 times 0, 11 over 2, 5 over 8. 
and if I do a term by term multiplication, this will be equal to zero, three, 30 over 11, and 48 over 11. And I have to add that to R3 prime, which is zero, minus three, one, and minus seven. And then I will have to uh, do a term by term addition again, just as before. Uh, so zero plus zero will be zero. The three minus three or three plus minus three will be zero. And so this actually justifies the reason or justifies our act of multiplying row R2 prime by six over 11 because it turns into a three and if you added it to minus three, it will give a, a sum of zero. And so we continue uh, for this element, we have 41 over 11. And finally, we have minus 29 over 11. And so what will happen now is I will replace the last row of the previous matrix. So we have this matrix with first row 2, 3, 0, 4, a second row of 0, 11 over 2, 5, and 8. And for the third row, I replace it by this new row, which is 0, 0, 41 over 11, and minus 29 over 11. Now, if you will notice, this matrix now will satisfy uh, the definition of a matrix in row echelon form. So if you want to make a final check, the first element, non-zero element of the second row, which is 11 over 2, is towards the right of the first non-zero element of the first row. And likewise, the first element, or rather first non-zero element of the third row, which is 41 over 11, is towards the right of the first non-zero element of the row above it, which in this case is 11 over 2. And so this matrix now is what we call a matrix in row echelon form. And the concept of a matrix in row echelon form is important in, in particular um, solving systems of linear equations and um, further on in determining the inverse of um, invertible matrices. So for now, that's it. Uh, that's, that's it for our discussion. And thank you very much.